very first version that went out, the general release was incorporated, for those who don't know, incorporated the voiceover, incorporated an ending which was really fundamental, kind of artificial, to, in context of the overall drama. They lived with each other, the film, and those two elements lived with each other, out for almost another 15 years till it was shown in the Santa Monica Film Festival by accident, as a, a director's cut, and somehow come out the wrong draw. This really, to save a lot of confusion, is the definitive version, which is without um, any voiceover, without that ending. In fact, it now ends where it should. There were a lot of memorable experiences on that show. Um, probably the most significant for me was that it was at the beginning of my career, and I didn't really know that much about making a movie and it was such a huge experience i'm rachel deckard it seems you feel our work is not a benefit to the public the action time is a factor in this so please pay attention i answer as quickly as you can sure. i always believe that the film should be ahead of the audience not the audience even level with the and the voiceover was telling us what was happening or telling us what was about to happen or explaining things that, honestly, you should work out for yourself. That's the whole part and parcel of drama, isn't it? Fundamentals of drama is you follow the drama, it's ahead of you. Let me tell you about my mother. quite surprised when our remix finished it recently it's it's um, to use the much hackneyed word it's pretty cool <laughs> Blade Runner has often called one of the most influential science fiction movies ever made why do you think that is I think because I've normalized urban environments and that's urban is where we live and uh, we don't live in space we don't live in deep space we haven't really most of them never will never or have never experienced that um, the urbanity of Blade Runner is what I made urban, wet, dark, rainy, grungy. I mean, I think made grunge cool. Blade Runner was is is cool now. More than you. A lot of the people on the cast were fun. Joanna Cassidy and. Daryl Hannah and Rutger, and Ed Edward James Olmos and Bill Sanderson. And we all made an interesting core. But sometimes a movie, when you're on it, will take a great turn for the better, and nobody can really define it, because some type of chemistry takes place. It had an energy, and you could feel it when you were making it. It's a natural story for a, you know something to follow. A sequel, certainly could be considered. You end up with the perfect example that one could be Nexus 6 or Nexus it's 7, and live. the other one is the guy is actually definitely again, a replicant. But he could be Nexus 8, maybe he lived till he's 200. There is a maker serial number 9906947. XB71. Interesting. It was a work of pleasure doing this film. Even though there are many who say it was agony and I say it was the agony and the ecstasy. And it, you know, nothing's nothing good happens easy. And um, I really was uh, really loved making this. And at the end of it, I thought, you know, it's 25 years on, so. I can talk about it immodestly, thinking I thought I'd really cracked it. And the second thing I learned is just when you think you cracked it, you haven't. Okay.